Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So, here we are once again. It's uh, another Monday. And uh, I hope you guys are as ready as I am to get started on a new lesson and to get to work together on more learning. So, um, for tonight, as it has been previously um, planned, we are going to go ahead and work on, as I said, um, jokes. And we are very likely to go ahead also and work on um, describing cities. So think about your city, think about where you live and the landmarks that might uh, make your city special. And what are the things, you know, that um, you love about the place where you live? So that is going to be part of the topic for tonight. Um, of course, as per usual, we also are going to have a practice. And uh, well, as it is a Monday and as it is also is sort of a custom, we are going to go ahead and work on well, basically the same idea as we normally do on the beginning of the week, which is going to be another question about your weekend. But this time around, it's going to be the contrary. It's going to be about how was the weekend. Um, normally, what I do here is try and see if you guys were able to complete all the plans that you had. And at the same time, see what were some of the activities that you developed during um, this time off. So. Hopefully, this week is going to work properly. And what I mean by that is that we're not going to have any t any interruptions, that we can finish the classes as they are supposed to be um, from Monday to Thursday. And uh, yeah, we have, you know, a longer weekend next time around. Um, but let's see. How was the weekend? Let's get started with it. And I think I would like to hear first from um, Himelda. So tell us, how was your weekend? Well, good evening. My weekend was, uh, well, you know, I don't, I didn't uh, something interesting. I just uh, did groceries and Mm -hmm. uh, how do you say me baña mis perritos? Um, you can say, for example, I bath my pets. Oh, well, bueno, in este caso son perritos. I don't know. Are they like tiny, tiny, or are they um uh, like dogs? Tiny, tiny. Okay, so you can say I bath my puppies. Yes, I yeah. bath my puppies. Uh, then I I rest. All right. That's nice. I mean, it's a weekend. So, of course, you know, if you, you have time to rest, go ahead and rest. Um, Great. That sounds amazing, actually. Very nice. Very, very nice. Thank you very much for sharing. All right. How about the case of uh, Luis? Luis Enriquez, tell us, how was your weekend? Yes. Good evening. Evening. <clears throat> so, uh, my weekend... It's the same like previous weekend. We stay home. We made made a lot uh, visit to the family. Uh, we made to to some places to eat on the breakfast, and maybe uh, sometimes to the dinner on Saturday. Sunday we take breakfast in a fast food restaurant. We made uh, some uh, clean in the house, mm -hmm. wash the car, and uh, maybe in a, a, a pair of weeks, we, we will go to, to a travel to the interior, to the beach or some mountain. But this, weekend, this weekend, it was, it was the same like previously. Okay. So yes. uh, basically a routine weekend. Yeah, a routine weekend. Yes. All right. I mean, that's nice. Sometimes, you know, um, the stress of going out or maybe the spending money um, is hard. And sometimes it's just better to stick to the regular, just be home and do the things that we are used to do. Um, so that's great. I mean, 
at least, you know, you had chance to like um, be with your family. And I remember that you said that you like to go have coffee at fast food restaurants. So you had that chance also to have coffee um, on Sunday, as you say that you went to um, to have breakfast at a fast food restaurant. Um, so great. I mean, it sounds like a nice weekend, you know, being with the family, doing things that are required in the house. So it's 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 good as long as, you know, you have also some time to rest. So nice. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. How about your case, um, Elizabeth? How was your weekend? Hello, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my weekend has been quite busy. Have had to be with my daughter and the doctor, and since the um, how you say fiestas patronales. Um, Same festival? No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that in my country is the Pisa Patronales. Mm -hmm. And there has been a lot of traffic and it's a bit very exciting. <sighs> I can imagine. Yeah, when we have those, it will be... um Depending on what we refer to, because it is a fair... You can say local fair, um, but some other people will understand it better if you call it a state fair. However, we don't have necessarily a state here, so that's why we don't necessarily call it a state fair. But people in English will understand it way better if you tell them like they are celebrating a state fair <laughs> in my in my town. Uh, but yeah, right now it will, or I mean, the example that you want to know will be a local fair, same local fair. So. Those times are stressing when, you know, some roads are closed and when there are some parades going on or different activities that are related to the fair, um, those times are pretty hard. So it's it's understandable that you with the situation with your daughter and also having all that uh, on top has been a stressful weekend. So, well, yeah, hopefully the tourism, uh, there has been a lot of traffic. It's, it's... <sighs> Uh, very very exciting. So um, but my darling in this moment is more but good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, right. So yeah, it was that. I mean, at least we have some good news. So I mean, the fact that she is doing better, you know, is something to feel great about. So nice, very nice. Hopefully, you know, next weekend or whenever you guys have the chance to go to the fair, you're going to enjoy it and uh, maybe forget about um, the hardships that you had to endure during this weekend. But great. Thank you very much for sharing. All right. How about we hear now from Abby? How was your weekend? was relaxed because I'm I'm didn't do laundry. <laughs> so I stay in my bed and watch series and play Mario Kart. <laughs> okay. I mean that's not too bad. That doesn't really sound like a like a hard weekend. So yeah, great. I mean sometimes uh it is not required that we, you know, go ahead and do or um, take care of all those hardships. So nice. I mean, you do that. You do great when you do something for yourself, when you rest, and when you have some time for yourself. So very nice. At least you got to enjoy yourself for a little bit. All right. So um, how about we hear now from let's see, Lorena. How oh, was I your weekend? I was a little bit tired because I did many things. I iron, like I told you. Mm -hmm. I watch uh, the Good Lover. It was very interesting. Like La Buena Mante, I don't know what it was the name, the Good mm -hmm. Lover. And then I had I went to sleep when uh, on my friend's house, and I got wet because it was raining with a lot of windy. Wind. And then, uh -huh. we, we, yeah, then I, I get wet, I got wet, and on Sunday I went to to see the play, 
the play at the theater. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I saw uh, Edipo Rey. And I, I did almost everything that I, I wanted to do. Great. That sounds nice. Yeah, sounds like, uh, I mean, you had a, como es que se decía? Uh, I forgot about mi amada. <laughs> sleepover. Es un sleepover. Yeah, a like sleepover. that. Yeah, es un sleepover. So nice. I mean, that's the only thing that came to my mind when you said that you went to sleep at a friend's house. You know, yeah. that you were you were having a sleepover. We so, sleep the, the trick together. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's nice. And how was the play? Yeah, it's really, it was really, really interesting. Really, it, it was like a, a new one, but it is the same with, with, the, with the same history, but it made in a, in a new in Like a, a new, new version. Way. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. a, imagine Edipo Day, like a, with, the, with, the, with his shirt without, without buttons and mm -hmm. With a lot of a lot of uh, cadenas, uh, chains. Yeah, and then we're looking really strange, no? Oh. And then it was nice. <laughs> it All was right. Nice. Have yeah. you ever have you ever seen the movie No Manches Frida? Uh -uh, no. no. Oh well, it's a Mexican movie where they do a version of that. You know, like the students. Uh, it's like it's a nice movie. But the thing is that um, some students at a high school are studying or practicing rehearsing for um, for a performance in Romeo y Julieta, I think it is. But the thing is that uh, there is a teacher who is not necessarily a teacher. That is not a spoiler. Uh, but the thing is that, um, yeah, yeah. The thing is that he um, kind of changes the whole thing. And he turns the, the, the play yeah. into a version, into a, a newer or renewed version wow. of it. They have like neon on, on their bodies, like, you know, neon lights. And they have like black light lighting the stage. So you see like the, the neon lines on their bodies. And like, it's, it's very different. It's like psychedelic to some extent. Um, they don't necessarily say that um, Juliet, took like a or like they killed Romeo I think it's the first thing they talk more about like common topics of nowadays things so I kind of see what you know where some theaters are going with that they're trying to change or spice it up a little yeah, bit yeah yeah so yeah I mean for new audiences at least to you know to call the attention of new audiences so great sounds great all right thank you very much for sharing already then how about we hear now from uh let's see Gabriela, Gabriela Garcia, in your case, how was your weekend? Hi. Hey there. Uh, I have an excellent weekend because all the things that I have planned uh, occurred. Um, on, well, not all of them, but on Saturday I had a workshop, mm -hmm. but the organization that, it, that should um give us the the the, the subjects they forgotten to come so they forgot yeah is that yeah they, they forgot, forgot to, come. To, to come so it it got cancelled but uh we didn't have to to reschedule mm -hmm. and and then i have long time to to spend to to get or to have perfects because uh, I have planned to be so early, but if uh, it will finish so so quickly. So mm -hmm. and then I have I I pass time with the children of my church on Saturday, mm -hmm. and on Sunday I went to. Um, a place I don't know how to say, but it's like uh I don't know how to how to explain, but it's far. It's like uh where I, I don't know como 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 familiars, but like familiar, but I don't know how to explain. But en español, I, ¿cómo I, sería? 
es que no sé cómo, cómo decirlo, o sea, eh, este, como una salida de campo, pero no tan, tan, tan de campo. Ajá. Uh, something like that. Uh, and I spend time with my family in that place. And in the afternoon, I went with my cousins to have a brunch. That's all. Okay. Nice. I mean, it sounds like you had some fun. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain because if it's a if it's a picnic, you know, it's it's it sounds like it's different from a picnic. It's more like going to for a walk or something, but at the like um countryside. But still, it's nice that you had you know you got time to spend with your family. So great, very nice, very very nice. Already. Um, let's see if we now can hear from. Josué, how about you, Josué? How was your weekend? Uh, okay, I was uh, I was enjoying the religious festivities. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, on Santa Ana, um, uh, what, uh, that works a lot of fun. Um, I I ate uh, delicious food, and that's all. All right. I enjoyed my day. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean, Santa Ana has many great things to offer. You know, it's it's a very great place. I have been there a few times, and um, yeah, like. Basically, every time I go, it's like I want to come back uh, year after year after year or time after time. Um, so, yeah, it's it's wonderful. I mean, the reason why I like Santa Ana better than San Miguel, because they are very similar in terms of like um, like architecture uh, or in some extent. But the thing is that San Miguel is way more crowded or at least it's way more busy. Like um, there are there is traffic like the whole day every day like san miguel is is packed all the time but santa ana is a little bit more relaxed at least that's what i have seen the times that i have been there it's um more calm like you know you find traffic yes but mostly when you're close to like the city center to like the actual downtown but in san miguel it's like you find traffic almost everywhere because there is like on commerce on every corner and that makes the thing more difficult for everyone But yeah, I mean, Santana, it's a great place. So nice. Uh, it's very nice to know that you also got to enjoy some great food out there as well. All right. How about the case of uh, Carla? How was your weekend? Hi, teacher. Hey um, well, I told you um, on Friday, I mean, um, that I have a meeting with my uncle because uh, he was, um, how can I say, uh, he was <laughs> um, cumpliendo años, ¿cómo se puede decir eso? He, he was... had his birthday. Ah, okay. Yeah, he, he has had his birthday. birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we have a meeting with uh, the family, the close family, and we have a good moment, and that uh, was on Sunday, on, I don't know, uh, Saturday, sorry, and on Sunday, I have a brunch with my mom, and we uh, we going to a restaurant to eat something delicious, and I don't know, that's all, I have many homeworks from the university and i have to do that okay and well, that's, that's all that's sad you know when you have to spend a lot of time <laughs> doing homework yeah it takes a yes. lot of time away from the family once you graduate though you miss the homework because you now have to earn money to pay bills but yeah that's, that's, that's life you know you have to worry about something now and you have to worry about something later on but great um The thing, the only thing that I am taking away from this experience or from this um, sharing right now is that the term brunch is becoming more and more common in our culture. And I love that because once when I went to the US, I remember that I heard people saying, you know, that uh, we're going for a brunch. And 
that happened mostly when I was living with like the second family because they had like a closer relationship with like the whole family. Um, and after church, we will almost always go to a brunch, but I didn't know what a brunch was. I was like, what is a brunch? And uh, I think it was the second time when my Finnish friend, Finnish conste cuando hablo de Finlandia, si no finish de que terminó, si no finish de Finlandia. So my Finnish friend, she told me that it was a mix between a, a breakfast and a lunch. It's like, it happens around 10 a.m. And it's because people who wake up late on Sundays, um, it cannot be called a, a, a breakfast uh, anymore. So it now is more of a breakfast and a lunch. So they call it a brunch. Um, and that's great. I mean, I used to do that. or I mean, my, in my family, we are used to doing brunches but we didn't know that's how you refer to it because normally on Sundays we only do two meals in a day one sometimes it can be one around 9 a.m and then another around 2 or 3 p.m and that's it you know Sundays it's like very easy very relaxed maybe we can take a snack around five or six when we go out but it's not like we have like a full meal but I mean it's nice, you know, to see that uh, we are also starting to um, to practice different cultures. So nice. Another thing is that I sent here in the chat the word gathering. Gathering, um, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys or if it was with the previous group. But the thing is that gathering is the word that we use when we talk about um, these celebrations or these get-togethers that we have with family. That is also another word that... or. I mean, in this case, it will be a phrase that you can use, get together. So it's a family get together. Si es bien literal, porque es bien, bien literal, pero así funciona también. Ustedes pueden decir, ¿verdad? I have a family get together on Sunday. Entonces, es, en lugar de decir meeting, because the word meeting is more reserved for things that are more like official, for things that are, that are a little bit more formal, um, like uh, political meetings, or you can refer to meetings as in, a, in the terms of like your job or maybe from the school, university, or what else? Maybe the, your team or a club in which you are part of, that can be a meeting. But when you're talking about the family, it's better if you refer to it as a gathering. Now, the term or the verb gather is also used to refer to basically pick up. See, in lugar de decir pick up, a veces también podemos decir gather. Like, for example, when you're gathering garbage because you're going to, like, um, ¿cómo se dice? Or... Ah, se me fue. Las tres R's. Reciclar. When you're going to recycle. So you gather garbage because you're going to recycle it. So instead of saying, I'm picking up garbage, you can say, I'm gathering garbage to recycle it. So the term gather, once again, can be used to talk or to refer to, um, like basically bringing things together or having things together. But all right, um, well, I think that will be it. Thank you guys very much for sharing tonight. Um, in my case, well, I think I share with you my plans for the weekend. And let me tell you that basically all of them worked. Um, but, okay, so right now I changed my mind a little bit because at this time, what I want us to do is that we're going to be working on some riddles. Any of you guys knows what a riddle is? ¿Alguien sabe qué es un riddle? Riddle. Sí, se los voy a mandar en el chat a ver si han visto alguna vez esa palabra. Riddle. Or any idea of what can be a riddle? Like a roll. Roll? Roll, to play a role. Mm, that is like a nice idea. It's a very interesting idea, but not necessarily. No. A riddle. Riddle. A riddle is when uh, you make people guess. Okay? It's when you say a phrase and then people have to guess what is the, um, like the complimentary comment or complimentary sentence to that um, sentence you have already or the phrase you have already mentioned. So, básicamente es una adivinanza. When we talk about riddles, it means that we're doing adivinanzas. So tonight, you're going to be learning a little bit about riddles in English. Now, once again, 
Esta vez no va a ser tanto como de analizarlo demasiado, no como lo que les mostré la semana pasada, sino que esta vez son un poquito más literales, pero conste, tampoco nos vayamos a quedar con la forma más lógica de pensar, ¿ok? O más bien al revés. Sí, más bien al revés es la cosa. Esta vez es de ponerle lógica, ¿sí? O sea, no buscarle como el sentido segundo, tercero que puede tener la palabra, sino tratar de buscar la opción más lógica, más directa que podemos encontrar para estas adivinanzas. Eh, vamos a ver, a ver cómo nos va ahora. Para hacerlo interesante, pero antes que nada, la regla más importante es, por favor, no vayan a usar ni sus teléfonos ni sus computadoras para buscar ninguna, ¿sí? Porque ya me ha pasado cuando hago algunas actividades como estas, que luego me doy cuenta que ahí las tienen ya en internet y es como que, ah, así como, ¿verdad? Así no se vale. Entonces, simplemente vamos a tratar de hacerlo de forma honesta, ¿sí? Um, esta noche, I feel like giving away some money. So, for any of you guys who ends up guessing one riddle right, I will send you a top-up. ¿Sí? I will send you a top-up, a one dollar top-up. Solamente chance para una nada más, eso sí. ¿Saben qué es un top-up? No, tampoco. Ah, pues entonces no le doy nada. La verdad. <laughs> ¿Saben qué? <laughs> un diccionario le puedo mandar mejor. No. <laughs> a top-up. Sandra sabe que es un top-up. Sandra sí sabe. Sandra ya, ya fue parte de ese tipo de cosas conmigo. Ya Sandra sabe de que, de que sí hay dinero aquí en juego. A top up. A top up es una recarga. Sí. A top up es... No, estamos hablando acerca de una recarga. Entonces, en este juego, en los riddles, si ustedes adivinan una, pero solamente una por persona, podemos adivinar, para que no me dejen pobre, cuatro. Sí. Pero entonces, eh, si logran adivinar una... Eh, ahí va, ¿verdad? A top up for you Entonces, eh, pero me la piden Porque conste que la vez pasada Hubo un grupo al que le fallé Porque les dije, ¿verdad? Eso, y fue, no sé si me tuvieron lástima o qué Pero ninguno me escribió, o sea, se lo ganaron Y nadie me escribió y fue como Yo ya con los cuatro dólares ahí en la aplicación Para mandarlos Y nadie me dijo nada y yo, bueno, después lo aprendí O sea, porque pues es que también vendo recargas pero bueno, la cosa es que Este La cosa es que, ajá, o sea no me dijeron, no me, yo les dije, ¿verdad? Mándenme su número o el número al que quieran que la mande y también eh, qué quieren, o sea, si la recarga el saldo regular o si quieren, um, ¿cómo se llama? O si quisieran este, un paquete. Pero they never did, they never text me anything and I wasn't able to find them like in the group. So, yeah, I ended up selling those four dollars. But okay, so that's the activity for tonight. Eh, pero igual, les pido en serio de favor no vayan a estar buscándolas porque si no ahí se mata el chiste, ¿verdad? Entonces, uh, let's see I am going to share the full screen because if I share only part of it la otra cosa es que según recuerdo en esta cosa en Zoom creo que les deja avanzar a ustedes en, en, las, aplicaciones, en, las, en las slides Tampoco hagan eso, porque si hacen eso, lo mismo, ¿verdad? O sea, no, ya, ya arruinamos el juego. All right. So we're going to be with this for a while. Then we're going to switch into what I was mentioning, describing cities or talking about cities and their, their landmarks. But let's see. So here we have the first riddle of the night. What time is it when an elephant sits on a fence? Think about it. What time is it when an elephant sits on a fence? Vamos a tomar solamente tres guesses, tres, eh, solamente tres, tres comentarios. O sea, la idea es que participemos, ¿verdad? Que demos nuestra idea de qué es lo que pasa aquí. Si lo adivinamos, nice. Si no lo adivinamos, bueno, we move on to the next one. Porque si no, aquí vamos a pasar toda la noche solo adivinando una. Ok, so what time is it when an elephant sits on a fence? What ideas do you guys have? Whatever comes to your mind. What time is it when an It's elephant... It's time to buy other... Well, other what? It's time to buy other uh, what? Okay, that's a nice idea. Yeah, it sounds it's, it sounds very close to the actual answer. Very very close. Any other idea you guys may have? What time is it when an, uh, an elephant sits in a fence? Is it twelve o'clock? I don't think so. 
Is it 9 a.m.? Maybe. So, uh, let's see. Abby, what do you think? What time is it when an elephant sits on a fence? I don't know what is, what fence is. Oh, fence. Fence is uh, como un cerco. Oh. Fence. Mm -hmm. What time is it when an elephant sits on a fence? What do you think, Ciro? What time is it when an elephant sits on a fence? I don't know, teacher. No I, think you, I think you did the, it is the six o'clock. It is six o'clock? All right. I mean, as I said, it has a logical explanation and it also has a, it has a creative explanation. Um, ¿Cómo se llama? Elizabeth was close because she said it's time to buy another one. But in uh, reality... It's time to make other... Um, other... Uh, <laughs> uh, other fence. Yeah, it's time to fix the fence. I I was too far. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I told you guys que los confundí cuando le dije, así eran las 12 y así. Yeah, pero igual, ese es mi trabajo, no quiero nada, tampoco quiero perder el dinero. So, yeah, it's time to fix the fence. When what time is it when an elephant sits on a fence? Well, it's time to fix the fence. Moving on. Here we have another one. Esta es una de las que más me gusta. Let's see. What is the difference between a yeweler and a jailer? What is the difference between a yeweler and a jailer? Si tienen dudas en qué significa cada una de las cosas, pregunten. No hay problema, que también estamos para aprender eso, ¿verdad? So, what is the difference between a yeweler and a jailer? I Maybe that's what it's jailer. Okay, the, what is a jailer? Oh, the, perdón, the, sí. Maybe the, 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 the metal, the jewel, jailer. Okay, jeweler with, with with gold and the other is made with with uh, iron. Hmm, that's a nice idea. Okay, primero que nada, jeweler es un joyero. That's I think it's it's pretty clear. We already know that a jailer is un carcelero. And your idea, Lorena, sounds very creative because yes, a jeweler works with gold and a jailer works with iron. You are getting close. You are getting very close. Um, jeweler. But... Is is to to save the jewel, and the jailer is to save the who is still. Hmm. Okay, very good idea as well. A jeweler is there to save the jewel, and a jailer is there to keep, let's say, the one who stole the jewels. That sounds nice. Okay, so let's see the last idea. What do you guys think? What is the difference between a jeweler and a jailer? Yo sé que todos están teniendo ideas, así que traten de decirla. La idea más descabellada puede ganarles una recarga hoy. Let's see. Um, Josué, any idea you may have? Uh, no, sir. No? No. All right, well, let's see then. A jeweler, y este estaba, estaba bien cerca lo que dijo de Echimela. A jeweler sells watches and a jailer watches sells see a jailer sells watches and a jailer watches sells ¿Qué entienden ustedes por eso? Esta esta sí era complicada, yo sé, aquí sí fue bastante injusto, ya van a ver unas que son más fáciles. Pero Marisol. bueno. Sells en este caso estas últimas son celdas. Entonces este otra vez es un juego, es un juego de palabras, ¿verdad? Aquí dice un joyero vende relojes y un carcelero Mira, digamos, oh, o, ajá, yeah. mira celdas. Yeah. Entonces, en inglés funciona, en español obviamente no. Entonces, pero a jeweler sells watches and a jailer watches sells. So that's the sells difference. With, with S and, and sell, sell with C. Mm -hmm. Sells with, y watches igual, ¿verdad? Watches en los dos sentidos. Watches en el sentido de yeah. los relojes and watches in, in the meaning of um, sí. the, the third person of the verb watch. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, it, it was a nice one. I mean, in my opinion. But, yeah. Bueno, vamos a ver. Recuerden, aquí hay un, un millón de... No, hay broma. Un dólar no más es. Bueno. What can you hold in your right hand, but never in your left hand? Esta sí es de lógica completa. Sí. What can you hold in your right hand, but never in your left hand? The finger. A finger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have an idea, a finger. What else? A ring, the ring, the marriage ring. Okay, a marriage ring. 
That's a nice idea as well. And Ciro? A watch. A watch. Okay, yeah. let's do one more. One more idea. So my we have left, a finger. Huh? My left hand. Good. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I told you. It's logic. Sí. ¿Qué cosa podemos tener en la mano derecha, pero nunca en la mano izquierda? La mano izquierda, porque no me la puedo agarrar solita, ¿verdad? So, yes. Bueno, anotado entonces. Abby, you got the first one. Great. Uh, I'm going to send it, I think, on the chat. Because I have to keep record as well. Bueno, a ver. Uh, there we have it. Muy bien. So, that's about it. Uh, bueno, creo que ya no quiero nada, fíjense. La verdad. <laughs> let's see. Let's go with the next one. Um, okay. So, what can you catch but not throw? What can you catch but not throw? What toys? Toys? Like throw. What? ¿Qué es? Lanzar. Oh, throw. Oh. Throw. It's lanzar. Yes. So, what can you catch but not throw? What do you think? A sick or eggs? Hmm. A cop. <laughs> Who said that? Cop. Oh, you said it? Yeah. You were very close. Very close, Gabriela. Very, very close. <laughs> but it's a cold. A cold. Yeah, so great. Okay. Elizabeth, you got the next one. That's nice. Bueno, por eso le digo, I no quiero nada. <laughs> Aquí cuando empezamos ya con empieza Cristo a padecer. Ok, so, what can you catch? Siempre me arrepiento cuando me, se me ocurren estos juegos, pero lo importante es que, es que participen. So, yes, what can you catch but not, but not throw? A cold. Nice, very nice. Es algo que podemos... Es que va, aquí el, lo importante es por el verbo, ¿verdad? Que eh, estamos utilizando. El verbo catch se utiliza cuando hablamos también acerca de la enfermedad de una gripe. O sea, Como decimos, pesqué una gripe. Ajá, pesqué una gripe. So, catch a cold. Entonces, eh, por eso es, es, es que se podría utilizar. Y luego, que está con el verbo throw, que pues catch and throw es como si estuviésemos jugando, ¿verdad? Cachando y lanzando. So, catch and throw. Pero en realidad, aquí lo estamos queriendo ver desde el otro lado. Desde el, como bien dijo Imelda, pescar, ¿sí? Como pesqué una gripe. Um, Okay, so, uh, a cold. Great, very nice. Let's move on. What kind of band never plays music? What kind of band never plays music? I don't know the name. Band-Aids. I would say that. Yes. Band yeah, but no, not Band-Aids. Band-Aids, it's, it's a, a it, it was a very good idea. But no, Band-Aids are not the, the answer. What else can you think of? Mm -hmm. What else can you guys think of? What other kind of band do you know? Let's see. Um, Sandra, what do you think? What kind of band never plays music? Or Jenny, what idea do you have? What kind of band never plays music? I want to hear you guys. I want to hear your ideas. What are your uh, options? Ba band could be something from a car. Or no. From what? From a car? Uh-huh. Oh, like the, the like the 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 oh forgot the name, but the engine band. Yeah. Close. That is very close. There's the abandoned birds. Uh, Sandra answers at the at the chat. Abandoned birds. Yeah, Sandra said the band-aids. Did like it's like I said at the beginning. Uh, Sandra, good idea, but no, it's not band-aids. It's not a band of birds either. And actually, that is referred to as a flock. When we talk about birds, when you have like a lot of birds, it's a flock. A flock. Uh, of birds. Radio, radio okay. band. A radio band. Close. Leslie, what idea do you have? Creo que Leslie va a decir lo mismo que dijo Ciro. Porque abajo la mano nomás habla Ciro. No, Leslie. A rubber band. Ah, yo le dije que tres nada más, pero bueno, sí, nos pasamos, pero sí. A rubber band. A rubber band. 
Where is the that? band never plays music? A rubber band. Elástica. Un elástico. Muy bien, una okay. banda elástica. Uh -huh. A rubber band. Yo nunca he visto un elástico tocando ningún instrumento. It could be the, the old, old ones, the, the machine band, the, the yeah. yeah. I saw that. <laughs> Ya, yeah, pues okay. sí. Ya, yeah, it's a problem. Muy bien. Bueno, vamos por el último. Eh, a ver, ya después del último de todos van a decir, nah, no participa para qué. Ok, so, let's see. What has many teeth but cannot bite? What has many a teeth? Combo. Este también está en español, ¿verdad? <laughs> Ok, bueno, no duró mucho la diversión. Gracias, Gabriela. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yes, that's it. That's it. Um, so, it's a comb. What has many teeth but cannot bite? A comb. Sí, ¿qué cosa tiene muchos dientes pero no puede morder? Un peine. Muy bien. Nice. Very nice. Congratulations. Oh, well, estas, las siguientes van a ser solo ya por diversión, ¿verdad? Solo como cuando seguía con mi ex después que me dijo que ya no me amaba. Uh, ah. so. <laughs> I was there just for fun. No, let it go. No, let it go. Que no soy Elsa, por eso no la dejaba ir. Ok, so. What has one eye but can't see? What has one eye but can't see? What do you think? What has one eye but can't see? It's a fácil. Es la verdad, yo siento que es de las más fáciles. Uh, you can. Sorry? Uh, you can. Oh, that's a very good idea. A hurricane. Uh, yes, it is one option. It is one option. Okay. What else do you guys think? De agujas, no sé. A needle. Uh -huh. A needle. Así se dice las agujas. Needles. A needle. Ahí está. Pero como les dije, lástima, Ciro. We got here late. Pero sí. Entonces, podría ser una... Bueno, perdón. A enviárselo iba en el chat. Mira, aquí está ya la palabra. Needle. Yes. A needle. It has one eye, but it can't see. So, nice. Very nice. Uh, let's see one more. Creo que solamente esta. Porque, pues, sí, ya, ya, ahorita ya, ¿para qué? So, uh, and then we move into the into the describing a city activity. So, what can travel all around the world without leaving its corner? Esta es quizás de todas mi favorita. So, what can travel all around the world without leaving its corner? ¿Qué cosa puede viajar por todo el mundo sin dejar su esquina? Apple. Can... I'm sorry? Apple. A ball, mm, because it drowned, right? Yeah, it's a good idea, a ball. The clouds. Clouds, okay. Yeah, but clouds actually move, so no, not the clouds. What else can you think of? Les juro que si todas las adivinanzas fueran como esta, difícilmente alguien se ganara nada. Las, o sea, de verdad. So what can travel all around the world without leaving its corner? A TV. A what? A TV. Mm. A TV. Sounds like a good idea. Ciro, dígame usted. With the wind. The wind. Mm -hmm. Also, it moves. So, no, it leaves many corners. It moves from many places. No. Sí, Rosa? Well, me. Hmm. Not necessarily, no. Bueno, les voy a decir ya. Bueno, no, la verdad, ¿sabes? No, voy a escuchar a alguien más. Alguien más. Abby, what do you think? What can travel all around the world without leaving its corner? What corner? Mm -hmm. Jenny, de hecho, preguntarle a Fede Jenny. Dígame usted, ¿cuál idea tiene? Uh, postcard. You were so close. So close. Very, very close, but no, it's a stamp. Sí, una, una, eh... ah, estampilla. Estampilla. estampilla, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Una estampilla, sí, la estampilla puede viajar por todo el mundo y nunca, nunca deja su esquina. So, yes, that is the answer. Muy bien, entonces, uh, the ones who won 
Uh, please send me your details or the number. Les digo así que me digan el número porque pues sí, ¿verdad? Puede que a veces tienen plan, entonces no les funcionaría una, una recarga. So, uh, if you want it on your phone, if you want it for someone else, it's okay. Uh, it's one dollar each. So, please tell me what, um, what number do you need it on? What is the company that you guys have? And what do you want? If you want it like regular top up, o sea, el dólar así regular, or if, or if you want like a, a what? A packet. Uh -huh, like a package. El so, paquete yeah. de un día. <laughs> el paquetito de dólar. Okay. I mean, it's okay. Bueno, a ver, ahora sí, vamos, no sé, estoy compartiendo lo mismo. Let's see. Uh, so now we're going to talk about describing a city. And when we go to different places, I want to know from you guys, what is the most important thing that you look forward to meeting about a new city? And here we're going to see some of the aspects that different cities can have and what are also some of the things that um, we can look forward. So these words describe different features of a city. Can you give a definition to each word or phrase? And which features are most important to you when you're choosing a city to visit? So first of all, I would like to hear what is your idea about each of these words? What do you think architecture is? What do you think cuisine is? What do you think costumes are? What do you think festivals are? What do you think historical sites are, nightlife, scenery, and shopping? So let's hear from each and every one of you. What are your perspectives re relating to all these words? Um, starting with Josue, what do you think architecture refers to when you talk about visiting a new city? Hello. Oh, yeah. Um, the Coliseum. Sorry? The Coliseum. Oh, okay. Yeah. But what I'm looking for is more of a description. Like, what do you think it is? Like, what is, like, um, the important thing about architecture? Well, the... Uh, oh, no, no. I, I want to say my answer. Um... Okay, well, what we're seeing forward or looking forward normally when we refer to architecture or like when architecture is important is mostly, uh, yes, Imelda? For uh, it history. Okay, mostly when we have historical places or when we have places that have like special features, like many people, for example, look forward to going to, per to Paris because they want to see um, the Eiffel Tower or many people want to go to um, what? To Giza because of the pyramids. They want to go to... Um, Machu Picchu. Yeah, to Machu Picchu because of the, 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 the archaeological the site or the rocks and everything. So, yeah, I mean... Architecture mostly refers to the structures, you know, to the buildings that are present at the place and that make it attractive for people to come and visit. Um, for example, in Santa Ana, I will say that one of the things that drags a lot of people will be the cathedral. In my case, I love admiring all the details that the cathedral has. Um, so it's one of the things that I love about the city. Also, many of the buildings that are like old fashioned, like colonial I, i'll say i don't i'm not even sure but i feel like they are you know like colonial era and uh that will be something that will call my attention or for example when people go to um ah se me fue otra vez en serio el lugar este el lugar este que es blanco en guatemala oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Cayala. Cayala. There we go. Yeah. So when people go there, you know, it's because it's it's basically all white and uh, it follows like a pattern. So it's it's architecture what drags people there and the attractive um look of a place. Now, how about cuisine? What do you think about cuisine? How will cuisine be important in terms of bringing tourists to the zone? What do you think? The identity of gastronomy. 
Very yeah. good. For the variety of the gastronomy. Like, for example, in our country, a place that will drag tourists because of its cuisine, I think it will be Huayua. Uh, that's one of the biggest examples that I have heard. Or maybe Cojutepeque as well. It can be another option. Or San Vicente, where they sell like carne de chucho. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but San Vicente will be a good option. Yeah. Um, San Miguel, con las pupusas con... con... Con el repollo de, de mayonesa, maybe. Pasta uh, negra, <laughs> deliciosa. Pasta negra, delicioso. <laughs> Hoy temprano me preguntó un amigo, ¿y a quién este, lo lleva al mercado a comprar pupusas, verdad? Y me dice, ¿y aquí en este mercado no, no las venden con salsa negra? Yo, no. O sea, really? hay, hay opciones. Tampoco es como que en todos lados, ¿verdad? Hay lugares que sí son bien autóctonos, o sea, que es como que es, es así, es así. Pero tampoco, la gente a veces exagera. ¿Por qué no? La mayoría de lugares en realidad tienen disponibles de los dos eh, tipos de curtido. ¿Por qué? Pues sí, uno entiende. Pero, ya, yeah, I mean, uh, he was asking me that. He was asking me if the, the market only sold uh, pupusas, you know, with the, with the salsa negra. But yeah, cuisine refers to that, to the attractive part when it relates to the variety of the food or the new versions of food that you may try at that place. Like, For example, I think it was Imelda who said that she would like to go to Mexico to try the food. I think, was it you, Imelda? Yes. Oh, okay. Mexican food. I, I got it right. So, yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, for example, some people want to go to India because they see videos on how they prepare street food. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really dare, you know, to try the, that food. But some people are attracted to it. Now, how about customs? In terms of, in terms of customs... Have you ever come or visited a place because of the customs or because you have heard that they have like different traditions or customs? Um, or, well, before anything, what do you think customs are? It's part of the culture. Yeah. And the, All right. Every, for, every side. It's part of the, of the culture and the practices that people have at that place. And uh, for example, one place in our country that will be very relatable to this section of customs i would say is nehapa with the festival that they have so Why? it's like yeah the fireballs it's like a very attractive thing it's very nehapanese um so it's it's very special of them another place that in my case has like a lot to do with customs is now Wisalco because you can also see you know like the different ways in which they operate let's say like their day-to-day -day life is a little bit different from the rest of us because normally one of the things that i love about the times that i have been to navisalco is that the market takes place at night so that's that's very attractive to me because in all the cities that i have been before the market takes place in the morning like as early as you can get there in the morning you're gonna get the best products But in Nahuizalco, it's different. It starts around 5.30. At least that's what I have seen. And it goes, well, as late as it can go, I think. I have actually never been there too late. I think the latest that I have been there is like 7 p.m. But I have seen that they start, you know, bringing the things out like around 5. So it's something different and very, very interesting. What other place can you mention um, that will be related to customs that you guys have visited before? Um, in Guatemala. Okay, Guatemala. Yeah, that's uh, uh, where. Yeah. Um, when I went to Guatemala last year, I able to see the people still um uh, ever use the traditional coffins. That's and also right. So logic. Mm -hmm. uh, and the zoo, uh, and the market, uh, all people use that that closet. And they are very fashionable. Because I love yeah. seeing that, like, you know. The colors. Mm -hmm. the, so, and it, and yeah. the high heels. I don't know if you saw anyone wearing high heels, but, um, well, I have family in Guatemala, so I go there very often. Um, it's like, normally we, do, we go twice a year, sometimes even three times a year. But the thing is that um, I have seen that many times, you know, how, like, they're, the, for example, The clothes that they wear are very expensive because they say that those, you know, the dresses that they wear or, or the skirts are very, bless you, are very, very, very expensive. So it's, yeah. um, it is very nice to see them, you know, wearing those, those clothes. I will say that it's, 
pretty hot, but the good thing is that Guatemala is a little bit cooler than El Salvador. Um, but something that I love is when I see them wearing high heels and they were in high heels, but with like classical dresses, it's just great. It's like the perfect combination. So yeah, Guatemala, a very good example as well. Now, I'm how about... with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How about festivals? What do you guys understand by festivals? What do you think festivals are? Um, Abby? Like a festival. Yes. Traditional parties. All right. Yes, like traditional parties, like, you know, celebrations that take place. Aquí, de hecho, hubiese también, o podríamos también mencionarlo en Ejapa, ¿verdad? It's like a celebration, like something that happens um, year after year. And it's like a, a tradition at the same time. Yes, Ciro, what are you going to say? San Miguel Festival. El, it will be a carnival, but it is a festival. It counts as a festival in this sense, but it is referred to as a carnival. And also, yes, La Feria Ganadera in Santa Ana, that is also a, a very um, classic, I would say, classic festival that takes place every year. So those are very good examples in our country and around the world. Well, there are many other festivals that are celebrated. Um, you guys have already placed the examples, so I'm not going to mention anymore. So nice, very nice. How about historical sites? Now, when we refer to historical sites, it doesn't only refer to architecture. When we talk about architecture, we're going to mention things that are like at the moment. Okay. What? But when we mention historical sites, they can re relate to things different from, from this. For example, uh, it can be that you visit where, I don't know. The Ruina where... de San Andres. Okay, La Ruina de San Andres will be one. However, that can also fall into architecture, but yes. Uh, but I was thinking more of things like, have you guys ever been to Morazan, to Perkin, where they have like, places where it was supposed to be like a like a guerrillero camp so it's it's you know like a historical site Whip, Whipple uh, museum uh-huh they have a small museum there as well so you can see like how things were or other thing that can be considered a historical site can be like where one martyr um passed away like for example uh the place where they you know murdered uh, Monsignor Romero can be a historical site. So it's, you know, like different, a little different from architecture itself. However, they can also be mixed because as uh, Elizabeth said, Las Ruinas de San Andres are a very good example of what um, a historical site can be because it's part of our history. Um, but yeah, architecture, as I said, it's related, but it's not necessarily the same. And now, how about nightlife? What do we take for as nightlife? I think it is a, another perspective of each city. Mm -hmm. Like how active a city is at night. Yeah. Yeah. Because for tourists, I mean, for, for me as a tourist, when I visit places, I normally enjoy the night more than the day because during the day it's hotter, during the day it's like, um, too bright sometimes for my liking so I prefer to do things at night and uh, also many places in our country are starting to you know you know to gain this aspect to start like or to be more active at night so nightlife will refer to that to like the activities or sort of activities that are available for people to do during the night um, because well many cities they only have the basic things like um, drug stores or hospitals or clinics at night open. But there are other cities where, for example, cafeterias are open at night or even shops or they have like discotheques. So many things that are going on during the night. So nightlife will also become an important part of what, um, you know, people look forward to when visiting a place. Yes. Like in, in Brazil. Mm -hmm. it the pizzeria open at six o'clock in the morning uh, at night oh at night oh yeah oh. it's not pizzeria all day oh that's interesting 
Yeah, that's yeah. very interesting. Great. That's a nice detail. All right. But, uh, well, tomorrow we're going to continue talking about this. And we're also going to talk about what are the things that you guys look forward to when you're going to visit a place? Like, what is the thing that you expect the most or what gets you more excited when you're going to visit a new place? So that is for tomorrow. For tonight, please, please um, send me a message. The ones who got, you know, the um, the upper hand, it will be Avi, Elizabeth, uh, Leslie, and Gabriela. And I will make sure that I send you guys, um, you know, whatever it is that you require. So um thank you very much for your participation during this uh evening and i hope you guys have an amazing rest of your night and an amazing day tomorrow see you tomorrow as well to continue learning and to continue practicing so bye-bye for now have a good bye. day bye-bye